Will Forkiller understands that politics is a minefield, but now he's running for another office. William, welcome. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate it. Thank you for the honor to be here. Good to have you, my friend. First of all, where are you from? I'm from Stillwell, Oklahoma. Actually, I live in a small community, Peavine, in between Stillwell and Westville, Oklahoma. Family? So I have a wife named Carrie, uh, one son, 12 years old, Toss. Toss Mabry. So. All right. And you're currently in the legislature. That is correct. Setting, uh, what, serving. Why in the world would you want to run then for chief of the Cherokee Nation? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, we, uh, ever since I have been in the House, serving in the House, I've had people ask, uh, you know, now that you're in politics, when are you going to run for chief? When are you going to get started there? You know, we kind of played it off for a bit. Um, didn't really, you know, even think much about it. And as this cycle, this election cycle is growing closer in the uh, Cherokee election. Uh, people have been coming to me more and more, mm -hmm. uh, you know, saying, hey, when, when are you going to step out there? When are you going to do this? And uh, so uh, my wife and I, I talked her into, I said, let's at least consider this. Let's think about this at least. And so we, we talked, family, friends, close friends, and family and visited a little bit. And more, more than that, uh, prayed about the whole situation mm -hmm. because this is something you don't step into lightly. It's, it's, a, it's a big endeavor. So uh, as, as we talked and as we prayed, you know, uh, my wife, Carrie, and I, we, we felt peace about the decision to step into this race. And so, uh, you know, once, if you feel that peace, you don't, you don't back down. So that's why we're stepping in. As you look at the Cherokee Nation today, certainly you must have goals that you want to see achieved. First of all, let's start at the beginning of it. Why, forget that, let me start again. What needs to be addressed first? What one big thing would you change? One of the, one of the biggest uh, things that I would look at um, would be definitely be health care, improvement on the health care system. Um, well, just my background, uh, I come from an education and nursing background, so mm -hmm. I have health care in my, in my past, and I still, I still practice nursing today. Uh, so uh, health care, I did, I've had, a, had the opportunity, that's where I first started uh, my nursing career is at Hastings Hospital. And I've seen, you know, the, the, how, the workings of the hospital. And now we see uh, I mean, a million patients a year. We see a lot of patients, uh, you know, uh, staff works very hard uh, with what they have and with the number of staff that we have. You know, I'd love to see uh, more healthcare providers uh, involved, more health healthcare providers recruited. Our young Cherokees that go off to school uh, to be, earn health care degrees, I'd love to get them recruited back in and serve their people. It seems to me like, though, I mean, you're a young fellow in reasonably good health, and we hope of a sound mind. <laughs> 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 so I, I got to know, I, the Oklahoma legislature <laughs> is really interesting these days. Why would you want to go from that interesting kettle into the pot of Cherokee Nation politics? Because they're both equally active, I guess, for lack of a better word. N nicely stated on the active part. Uh, my house district now is District 86, which is all of Adair County, mm -hmm. Northeast Cherokee, and Southern Delaware counties. So my house district sets, I mean, right in the heart of Cherokee country. Um, I have uh, 21,000 Cherokee citizens that live in my house district. So mm -hmm. I'd be serving the same, same people, same area. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the programs and things that take place, the funding for the schools and through healthcare, they would also benefit. Uh, the programs would benefit not only Cherokees but non-Cherokees that live in my house district. Uh, I, I feel with, I would be able to be more impactful at a, at a quickly, more quickly, being chief of the Cherokee Nation mm -hmm. for our area more more so than I would at the state level. I enjoy what I'm doing. I love serving. Uh, I'm serving 100% to my capacity right now. Uh, in fact, just came from there, so uh, it's just it. I just it's just that uh, I think it's time to uh, to step into this, and, and uh, I just I feel led to do it. So will you will you have time to do both? Now, n no. Legally, I could hold both offices. There, I, I, legally, I could, but uh, I, I would not. I would not be able to do justice to either mm -hmm. if I tried to do both. Would not be able to do justice to. Uh, to the, to the citizens of District 86 and, and the uh, Cherokee Nation, the citizens of the Cherokee Nation, if I try to do both. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would, uh, I would when, when I win the race, I would be, definitely be a full-time chief. Okay, so then you would leave the legislature. That is correct, yes. Um, 
Cherokee Nation came a long way under Wilma Mankiller. And lots of folks now are pushing for her face to be the next image uh, to replace uh, the president on, on the $20 bill. Correct, yes. What's your feeling on that? I, I think that would be a, quite an honor, f uh, not only for, for uh, Wilma Mankiller, but just for the Cherokee Nation itself, just to have, have a representation mm -hmm. such as that uh, on the national level, like sh and sh as, as she was a, 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 a true, uh, a true role model for many, many, not only Cherokee ladies, but women or men as well. You know, she did lead the nation and, and uh, had a lot of progress mm -hmm. and moved forward w when she was under, in control of, of the Cherokee Nation. So that would be an honor. A lot of young Cherokees appear to be leaving the nation and leaving the state of Oklahoma. What could you do then to entice them to stay and to turn around and contribute to the Cherokee Nation and the state? Once again, it would be, uh, you know, helping with their education, allowing them, you know, uh, to obtain funds through the Cherokee Nation scholarship-wise to, to earn their degrees. And then again, just promoting and, and creating more jobs in, in the Cherokee, within the Cherokee Nation, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the rural areas. Uh, you know, we do create a lot of jobs. If a lot of them are toward the Tulsa, the more populated areas. So if we could bring those jobs or create some uh, jobs in the rural areas to keep our uh, Cherokee citizens, our young people there, uh, a lot of them uh, just to, to work around home, uh, you know, and, and definitely try to, and that would also increase, you know, the, uh, ec the economic impact of mm -hmm. the nation with, with the state, as you all know, as we, as everyone is painfully aware of the, the uh, deficit that's here in the state of Oklahoma this year that we're battling with at the state level now. Uh, so, but uh, I would definitely, you know, uh, promote and try to recruit and keep, uh, like I said, education opportunities, educational opportunities, uh, and uh, entice them to stay here at, and create jobs in rural areas as well. It seems to me like as I think back, one of the things that Wilma did was she managed to find a way to bring water to really impoverished areas of the tribe. She had the support, of course, of a great many people, both in and out of the tribe, and Ross Swimmer, a former chief, was also involved in in supporting her efforts on this. Is there any one thing that you want to see taken care of for the people beyond what Wilma did in terms of bringing water in? One thing, one thing that I would like to look at with, with her was she was able to bring the water into, into the Bell community, uh, that direction. Uh, I think that is the key right there is, is the community. The Cherokee Nation has always, uh, is always, it, it, it's like a large family. It's a large, it's smaller families, but it makes up one large family, the Cherokee Nation does. And so I would like to put the emphasis, put the emphasis back on, uh, on communities and families and just get out and see what, uh, enter, get into the communities and, and visit with, with uh, citizens and see what their needs, what, their, what they want mm -hmm. to see the Cherokee Nation do and how they want to see the Cherokee Nation move forward really depend on the communities and, and their ideas uh, to help. It's always a good thing, a good plan to listen to the people. And it seems as though <laughs> in the non-Indian world, uh, lawmakers aren't doing much of that anymore. But the tribal folks seem to be doing it. They seem to be paying attention. All tribes are paying attention to what the people in their tribes are saying and their needs, and they address those needs Seriously, uh, what about education? Is that a big problem for the Cherokee people? As as far as is, I wouldn't say problem. It would be uh, it's something that I would also again focus on uh, with still being able to uh, offer scholarships and 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 allow our citizens to uh, to earn an education. Everybody mm -hmm. deserves a great education, as we all know. A society that's not educated is doomed to fail. And we have many bright young Cherokee citizens that, uh, you know, that we need to promote uh, and get help for. Uh, even if they would you know scholarships outside of the, the, the Cherokee Nation uh, boundaries, you know, eventually they're going to come home. Sure. And so we'd like to get them educated. And, and with that, if they, if they do travel out, you know, they will bring uh, new, new ideas, uh, new visions uh, back to our nation and, and back to our boundaries. And, you know, to be able to help uh, integrate that, those with, with our 
uh, ways we have now and, and just push the nation forward. Uh, you know, we do have, a, uh, we do help, the Cherokee Nation does help uh, very much with, uh, with the public schools, with their, with their tag monies, mm -hmm. you know, continue to promote that. Uh, so. Well, I'm going to have to, to cut you there. I'm sorry. We, okay. we, we've come to the end of our time frame, but we want to thank you for taking time to come in and visit with us. And we'll look forward to seeing how the election turns out. Good luck to you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you again. Well, she found a problem in need of a solution, and it's paying off big time. And she'll meet this young lady next on Green Country Perspectives.